On today's show, we break down TJ Hawkinson, a lot of people's favorite second-tier tight end heading into the fantasy football season, and we jump into that mailbag neck deep, answering your questions. Don't miss a moment. Foot Clan, we want to thank IP Vanish for sponsoring today's episode. They are a virtual private network that can keep you safe while you browse the internet. You can use it on your computers, your tablets, your phones. But, you know, stay safe on the on the internet. Like, you know, your business is your business. That's right. They stay out of it. They stay can, out of my business. That's, that's right. And, uh, you know, you get an anonymous IP address. You don't have any online censorship. You get protection when using public Wi-Fi. That's my favorite part. 24-7 support. So look, go to IPVanish.com slash footballers, claim your 65% savings. They have plans starting at just $3.49 or $31.49 a year. This is the time to sign up with our discount and their current promotional offerings. You can get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering. IPVanish is the best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot with more than 6,000 reviews. Show these guys some love. The repeat sponsors, remember, it's IPVanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself on Online. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you're nasty. Oh, then it's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Mike. Because <laughs> they're all nasty. That's right. I am your host for the day, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Right. Andy is searching for his voice. It is, it's somewhere. Yeah, uh, he has certainly lost it. He's here. He's he's in the, uh, the other room in the studio. He sounds like... Yeah, if he were to come in and start the oh, show, it would be just like ASMR and real. Oh, with the usual. Ah, it would just be. <sighs> and uh, we didn't want to do that to you, so we just did it to you. So I'm here. Andy's not. That means my best friend, Jason Moore. We are the best of friends. You had me super worried. I really thought you were going to say your best friend, Jay Grizz. Oh, the cardboard bear extraordinaire <laughs> is here eating the salmon. Salmon? The I salmon. really, I you, really hit that L. You sure did. L silent, bro. <laughs> Who was that? Uh, well, there was the 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 Raiders rookie a couple years ago on on uh, Hard Knocks was talking about the salmon. <laughs> the salmon. Oh well, that was a delight. Uh, hey, thank you all for tuning into Dynasty Week. It was a smashing success. It was an incredible amount of fun. Uh, so stay tuned for next year because you know how we do things. We bigger and better. Uh, but the the winner of the giveaways, the the Twitter jersey and the Instagram jersey, will we will be announcing that on Thursday. Also on Thursday, Jason. Oh, I, oh man, oh it's time. Maka laka ding dong. Yes, it's a mock draft show on Thursday. You're not going to want to miss it. This now has rookies involved, and it's the earliest lay of the land. We are almost done with our stats behind the scenes, so I think it's going to be an excellent time for a mock draft. And that's show. coming up because. In just two weeks, the Ultimate Draft Kit will be live. That oh. means that if you are a slacker and you've been waiting on the pre-order, like, oh, I'll get it before, that time is ticking. Yeah. Tick, 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 tick. That I means mean, that the the product will be well available, number one, on June 1st, and the price will go back to the regular price, out of the pre-order price. So if you want to save a little bit of quiche, Get in there, ultimatedraftkit.com. Please follow us on YouTube. Everybody, if you want to. Oh, I have a haircut today. Jason oh, has a haircut. congratulations. Yeah, no, we're getting all fancy schmancy, ready for the 2021 season. It's going to be the best season of all time. I haven't had a good haircut in quite some time. It also just really maximizes the size of my forehead. It does. It really highlights it how big it bit, is. Yeah. But I feel like we need a. There's nothing I can do about it. Like a special light. Just like a, like a highlight light that just Will really... Will make it look smaller? No. Oh, no. Well, then I don't want it. We want to lean in on this, Mike. Uh, so, and you can follow us on socials. Uh, Twitter is at the FF Ballers. I am at FF Hitman. Jason is at Jason FFL. And if you want to find Andy on there, he is at Andy Holloway. Jason, let's get into the segment. Oh, 
I totally forgot what it was. That is so absurd. Yeah. All right. The quick question of the day is a regress or impress. Talking about, well, not everyone's, but a lot of people's favorite tight end coming into the fantasy football season because like, we all know who Travis Kelsey is. We all know who Darren Waller is. Mm -hmm. We all know who Mark Andrews. But who is TJ Hawkinson really? Last year, the tight end four finish. Uh, I mean, those other guys, they rounded out the top five that I brought up. Over Don't forget George Kittle. George, yeah, George Kittle as well, of, of course. I, I, I did. Honestly, I forgot about him because of the injury. Yeah. Uh, in 16 games, he had over 100 targets. He had over 700 receiving yards at the tight end position, which is sensational. Massive changes, though. Matthew Stafford is out. Jared Goff is in. However, also out. Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones being replaced by Tyrell Williams and Brashad Perriman. TJ Hawkinson, Jason, is he going to regress or impress on that top five fantasy finish at the position? So I, I am I am quite bullish on TJ Hawkinson. I, I very much think he's going to impress. This is his third year. The third year for tight ends is usually when you see that leap forward. Um, it, it's more and more common for wide receivers to do it in year two. It used to, back in the day, be year three. But tight ends is still a longer timeline to uh, get to excellence usually. And... While Jared Goff is a downgrade, he, he I think the offense will be worse. I think his actual quarterback quarterback play will be worse. Jared Goff is not a he's bad, not bad quarterback. No. He is capable. I mean, we, we've been drafting not capable of winning a Super Bowl. Apparently, oh, no, says no. says Sean McVay. Um, I mean, but we've been drafting Robert Woods. We've been drafting you know Tyler Higby at tight end has had dominant stretches when he was sure. the only guy. He is very capable, and now T.J. Hawkinson finds himself in a position where he is clearly far and away the best receiving option on the team. Uh, you you could argue DeAndre Swift, but like uh, you know, Tyrell Williams is and Brashad Perryman. They are not going to um, be the leaders of this offense. I think it will be Hawkinson and Swift leading this offense. Pure mathematics of the amount of targets he's going to get. I think he's going to be nearer to 150 targets than to the 100 target range. And if you are anywhere near that at the tight end position, you're you're just guaranteed to be a top five tight end at least. And I think he has the actual talent, you know, to um, back it up. To to back it up. There's a reason he was drafted so highly in the actual NFL draft. And if he can't do it this year, he'll never do it, and he will do it this year. I currently have TJ Hawkinson. Now, I'm not done with my stats. So, for example, the next team up is San Francisco. I imagine George Kittle is going to pass him. However, TJ Hawkinson is currently sitting at number three. I love it. For me. And aside from George Kittle, like uh, anyone from Seattle going to crack that top three? Tampa Bay, Tennessee, Washington? I doubt it. So, right now, I'm looking at TJ Hawkinson as solidifying that the top of the second tier. I'm putting those three guys. I'm putting Kelsey. Well, if you want to put Kelsey in his own tier, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to fault you, but Kelsey Waller and George Kittle. Absolutely. I think the next question is who's that next guy up? A lot of people would go to Mark Andrews because of his breakout a couple of years ago and the better quarterback play, but I'm going to be going TJ Hawkinson this year. All right, let's move on to the news. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. The NFL schedule has been released, mm -hmm. came out last week. We do have an article up on the website breaking down some insights. Did you, Jason, have anything in particular you were excited for, worried about? I mean, this is real high-level stuff Oh, right now, super high-level. Um, the, the, the two things that really, you know, when the schedule comes out, there's always like a, a, some random, nuanced, weird thing like, you know, the, the opening schedule for Matt Ryan a couple of years where it was like, 12 straight dome games and everybody freaked out about. But for the most part, generally speaking, there's only two things that I really look at. Because people act like we don't know who they're playing before the schedule comes out. Like, we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We already know who they're playing. It's just a matter of what's the order. Um, and their travel, the rest, that yes. type of stuff. So the first thing I look at is quarterbacks for the streaming quarterbacks. There are always, you know, there's a handful of guys that I'm willing, 10 guys that I'm willing to draft at the end of uh, my fantasy, you know, uh, redraft leagues. 
and I am I, I take off a bunch of those guys and move up others. And to me this year, there's Kirk Cousins, Big Ben, and Tom Brady who get off to really great schedules. Uh, b between those three, it's Cincinnati, Arizona, Seattle, Buffalo, uh, Las Vegas, Cincinnati, and Dallas and Atlanta. Like okay. I love all of those. So that's my main takeaway. I would add to it that um, if uh, people don't necessarily know yet what they're going to be doing for their playoff structure because it's a 17-week season, but I would say the other thing just to be weary of is there are quite a few week 14 bye weeks. Now that should be fine because most leagues will be 15, 16, 17 for your playoffs. Um, but if you do a two-week playoff, uh, then you might be, uh, you might not want to do that because there's enough teams in week 14 where and in that in that week 14 group is Johnny Taylor, running back for the Indianapolis Colts. That will <laughs> that will not be fun if you are in a week 14 win and get in, and your RB one is on by. See, I don't mind. I don't mind having the the win to get in having a bye week because at that point. Well, I had all of my games earlier. I shouldn't have to win and get in. But uh, where I think it's a real problem is if you are in those two-week playoffs and now you're in the playoffs and you don't have sure. a player on a bye week. That's that's weird. Uh, in Green Bay news. I got a snake, man. Oh, man, I never thought we'd be able to play that drop again. <laughs> Blake the snake. Uh, Blake Bortles was signed by the Packers. Is this of note? Not really, but it's just fun to talk about because we have no idea what's going on with Aaron Rodgers. They needed a camp body is and, essentially what it came down to. And and Blake, I don't know if you realize this, Blake was available. He was not currently on a roster. They didn't trade like a, a two for him? No. No. no they just they signed traded him off the <laughs> you traded him for him off for the waiver wire. Yeah, I mean when this first happened, I, I really wanted to I really wanted to stoke the flames. You know, it was one of those like imagine you're in this rift with Aaron Rodgers, not liking how you've been managing the the team and then you're like I'm gonna go sign Blake Bortles right now I felt like you can't do that without knowing the message you're sending but the reality is they were going into camp and they didn't have a single person outside of Jordan Love you can't go you can't do that like you can't organize practices you have to sign someone so uh, it's probably not a big deal Bears head coach Matt Nagy has reiterated Jason that Andy Dalton is the starting quarterback going into organized team activities, to which I say, yeah! <laughs> oh, you had the deck of cards ready! Oh, That's Nagy. Stupid up, Matt Nagy. Up to his tricks again. I do think that Andy Dalton will start the season. And I do think uh, that Justin Fields will start week three. So well, That's pretty fast. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it, you know, mistakes are going to be made. It's Matt Nagy, and then we need to undo them. Andy quickly. Dalton, it, it, he has to be the starter right right now. You, yeah, can't, you can't say that Justin Fields is the starting quarterback. You have to at least give Andy Dalton the professional courtesy. You brought him in and told him he was a starter, which, number one, that's on you, Matt Nagy. You, you bring in someone like Andy Dalton and commit to them being the you, – you bring them in because you convince him he's the starter. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, about that. A big, well, we're drafting Justin Fields. So, uh, but, you're but you're totally the starter, Andy. So at least give, Don't worry. <laughs> give Dalton the chance to earn earn the job. or make Chance to lose the job. Yeah, mean? there you go. A chance <laughs> yeah. to lose the job. Uh, uh, the Broncos, they, uh, head coach Vic Fangio has said, the team's quarterback competition is totally 50-50. So Drew Locke versus Teddy Bridgewater, that is the camp battle we're all just glued to. That's actually really, really interesting to me because the way that the that's interesting it to you? is it is because the way that the management of this team has operated is how that they are desperately wanting Drew Locke to succeed. They are wanting to set him up for success, give him another chance, and be something special. That's how the management has operated. But in the end, it's now it now it goes from the draft season and the management to the coaching and the playing. And Vic Fangio, this is his world. And if it's a true 50-50 battle, then Teddy Bridgewater will win the job. And he will start week one. And I didn't bring up Denver as one of those um, early streaming candidates because I don't want to roll with Drew Locke. Mm -hmm. But they have a really nice start to the season. So if Teddy B is out there, I think he's going to be a fine streamer. Do you make anything uh, of the news 
that Urban Meyer, head coach of Jacksonville, he came out and he said, Travis Etienne is going to work exclusively with the receivers at rookie camp. And uh, Twitter went all abuzz when this was announced. Did you make anything of it? Um, I did. I made that we're going to hate Urban Meyer. <laughs> we're like, you know, we haven't had to deal with him in the NFL, but this is going to be one of those coaches. It's like, you freaking turd. Just, oh, man. I, I mean, the reality is he's a three down back. He was brought in because of his speed and pass catching ability, um, and I I think he'll take over the job by the end of the season, and I think he'll start as the pass catching specialist. And you know, the week one, I think it'll be you know more James Robinson, Carlos Hyde, and then sprinkling it's possible, yeah, ETN. But by the end of the season, it'll be his his role. And in just fun news, because fun. every everyone's converting into a tight end. It's me, Dave. <laughs> Dave has signed tight end Kelvin Benjamin. Uh, that's the New York Giants. I what? make I make little to nothing of this. Uh, I mean, th this tight end roster is full. There's no room for you, Kelvin Benjamin. This is just this is Dave Gettleman hooking his boy up with uh, with a shot at something in, in a training camp. At least put something on film. So that maybe somebody else will give you a chance. Yeah, Gettleman was wanting people to remember that he drafted the only wide receiver in league history with more than 130 targets, 1,000 receiving yards, and nine touchdowns as a rookie. He did that. Wait, that's a stat? That is a stat. Kelvin Benjamin, he's the man. What? Um, wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, yeah, with Evan Ingram there and Kyle Rudolph, I cannot fathom There's that no Kelvin room. Benjamin makes There's the There's no team. room in the end. But it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah that, that's going to be a lot of fun. That was today's News and Notes presented by Sleeper. Switch your league to the fastest growing fantasy platform. Jason, today is a mailbag day. Do you want it? I want it. Yes, Let's my go. man. Mailbag. Mailbag. Woo! I cause this normally when I when I when I do that, mm -hmm. I just say, hey, you're up, go, and I hit the button. I was actually giving you the option. But you, like a like a like a hero, you stepped in. That's right. I'm I'm, gonna, I'm just sad Andy I'm wasn't here, so I couldn't like <laughs> ask Andy to do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, off of Twitter from Robert, who says, "Is there such a thing as too early on AJ Brown, yes. wide receiver from the Tennessee Titans?" Yes, there is such a thing as too early on AJ Brown. There? there is. What what is too early before Tyreek Hill? That is too early. Okay. For is me. he your he's my one he or is, your wide receiver one? He is my wide receiver one. Uh, I I just can't imagine taking someone in that passing. Well, I love AJ Brown. Um, he's got the opportunity to be a high volume player along with his play, big play upside. So, I mean, to say like that, it's impossible for him to finish as the number one wide receiver. That's that's crazy. He could. But if you're telling me I can get a much higher volume from Pat Mahomes known I mean Tyreek's always great he's pretty much always you know in the top three at wide receiver if he's out on the field so I'm that would be that would be a mistake and just for reference so I'll uh, I'm assuming Christian McCaffrey Dalvin Cook Alvin Kamara and Saquon I'll make the assumption that all four of those guys will be some form of your top four yes uh, even though they are currently that is not my top four I'm just Oh, like, teaser. Stats are crazy, man. Here's the stats are when we find out when we, you take off the bias yep. and you just look at this is what I believe about this team and the, what I believe that this player's role is there. My running back four, I think, is going to surprise some people. Oh, man, I can't wait. So, Foot Clan, if you're new to the show uh, or you haven't had the, the ultimate draft kit in the past, we spend countless hours actually statting out every single player, every single team going way deeper than even the players that are actually listed in the ultimate draft kit so that the teams make sense and the numbers match up. And that is so much fun to see where our rankings lie because we have these early ranking shows, which is mm -hmm. just our opinion, our gut, our look at these names and say how we feel about them. It's really like an emotional mm -hmm. ranking. But now when we dig down deep and stat out every single stat for every single player in the NFL – at the end, you're sometimes these rankings are like, man, I can't believe where so and so ended up. So I also, uh, I also just had a mini panic attack because I couldn't find Antonio Gibson. It's like, 
Oh, wait a minute. How long? Like, he's in my 20s? <laughs> but I haven't stared at him yet. Oh, okay, so yeah. Was, oh, man. My heart my heart was beating out my chest uh, over so here. So he's not the But anyway, so back, back, to, back to the point was, though, like, I'm just giving you those four running backs. Are there any other running backs currently for you where you're, at, you're locking them in at 105, or are you open to taking Tyreek there? Um, so, I, I, you know, it depends on the, 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 the league, right? If it's a three wide receiver full PPR, I'd be absolutely fine taking him there. If it's a two, two and a flex half PPR, I'm probably taking a couple more running backs off the list. Okay. I'm going to take the Derrick Henrys and, okay. uh, y y I'll probably not take a wide receiver until round pick eight. Oh, that's, I haven't started here Derrick Henry yet. So, well, it, that might check out my top five. Right. Uh, Oh, and something you're going to love, Jason, off of Instagram, uh, Ira Ray says, talk about the Buffalo backfield, please. <laughs> okay, so here's what the Buffalo backfield is. Uh, you have Devin Singletary, who is an electric short area uh, specialist who can break every first tackle and then e extend to play very little. You also have a very slow uh, Zach Moss who will um, – he can catch the ball and then go nowhere. So oh, man. the backfield oh, is man. Josh Allen um, taking the ball from under center, handing it off to himself, and gallivanting down the field for fantasy glory. Oh, uh, right now Zach Moss is currently already outside of my top twenty-four, and I have five remaining teams. So that should explain how I feel about that. And Zach Moss is I have as the number one running back on the team. Makes sense. More pass catching, more goal line opportunities. Well, there was there was a handful of games towards the end of the season before he got hurt where he was actually the 1A. It definitely was not like a, a massive separation between him and, and Singletary, but it looked like they were trying to give Moss the, at least the starter job. Yeah, but the 1A, like the the the, the star of the of the junior varsity team doesn't that, well, matter. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, he's the 1A, but he's yeah. outside the top 24. Before we move on to some of your mailbag questions, Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank today's sponsor, Raycon. Whether it's for work or play, a lot of us are going to be on the move again this summer. My advice to you, take your Raycons with you. Maybe you're catching up on your favorite news podcast or sports podcast, binging an audio book, powering through a workout with a pumped-up playlist. A pair of Raycons in your ears can make all the difference. Get crisp, powerful beats at half the price of other premium audio brands. They look great. They feel even better. They come in a range of cool colors, customizable tips uh, included for a comfortable inner fit. Jason, never ever, I've, I, I may have said this before, if not, it bears repeating, never ever go to the grocery store without mm. your Raycons. The, it is pro tip. It changes, the grocery store is the worst. And it changes it into a just a delightful experience where I'm consuming a bunch of podcasts. You're learning so while I, you shop. I mean, it, it's a joke, but it's not a joke because I'm just I'm doing something, but I'm all I'm but I'm getting a mental sweat. We got to build a mental sweat as well. Uh, and, and listen up, Raycon's offering 15% off all their products for our listeners. Here's what you got to do: go to buyraycon.com/footballers. You'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. It's a great deal. Grab a pair and a spare. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash footballers. Buyraycon.com slash footballers. And Foot Clan, I want to alert all the businesses out there to look at hiring through LinkedIn because growing your business. You've got to get the right people. It, it, that's, the, that's the primary thing that matters. It's more important than what popular product or service that you have to sell. It's just, do you have the right people to ensure your company is operating smoothly, has the potential to expand? LinkedIn Jobs helps you find those candidates for free. I mean, we, we've we run a couple of businesses over the last decade or so, and I can honestly say that the success and failure of our endeavors have been entirely based upon the team that you are working with. Do you have the right people? And if I'm posting a job for free, which you could do through LinkedIn. I want to reach 740 million professionals. That's a lot. I want to target screening questions and use simple tools to filter and prioritize. LinkedIn Jobs will help you get the right person for your role. And your first job post is free. Just visit linkedin.com slash footballers. Again, that's linkedin.com slash footballers to post your first job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Speaking of running back versus wide receiver, we got a voicemail, Jason. Hey, what's up, ballers? 
I'm in a 10-team full PPR keeper league. I'm deciding to keep Travis Kelsey, but I'm trying to decide do I keep DeAndre Hopkins or do I keep Jonathan Taylor. And I'm picking ninth right there at the end of the round, and it's a snake draft. All right, thanks. Full PPR. Okay. Do you take Hopkins, lock in those 100-plus receptions, or do you go with Jonathan Taylor, the the breakout, second half breakout running back, rookie running back. But those PPR points for Taylor are almost certainly going down with the transition from Captain Checkdown P. River to Carson Wentz. Yeah, I would I would agree with what you just laid out. And the answer to this question would depend on it, do you have to start three wide receivers in, in your league format? If you've got to start three wide receivers and two running backs, then I would be willing to take Hopkins. But in general, when I've been at this 8-9 spot at the end of the first round, what I'm actually dreaming of is this scenario. I'm dreaming of having Travis Kelsey get to me at like the ninth pick in the first and somehow having one of the stud potential running backs still there. Well, that would be Jonathan Taylor and Travis Kelsey. That's a good first and second round and then build my team up. So I would, in general, go with Jonathan Taylor unless the league format is you know, advantageous to have more wide receivers. Let's see. We got uh, this one's from Instagram from Jimmy Potts. Is Henry Ruggs a breakout candidate this year? Oh, man. We're, getting, we're diving deep on well, Buffalo backfield, Henry Ruggs. This is a great question to bring up, and I don't want to talk about it because I don't like my answer. <laughs> I think he is. I think he's a breakout candidate. I really do. Nelson Aguilar was good for fantasy last year. I, I know that's crazy. But he was, and he's gone. And Henry Ruggs, uh, so I, I've gone back and watched every snap from Henry Ruggs' rookie season, and it's one of those things where, so uh, let, me, let me ask you this. Philosophical question time. Oh. When you're watching. What was that voice? That, that wasn't me. That was the. Uh, that was, uh, was Socrates? That was the, yes, that was Socrates. Um, when you're watching film and you see a wide receiver always getting open and not really having a good connection mm -hmm. with the quarterback. Do you just credit the wide receiver and say, Oh man, if he got it, you know, because sometimes I feel like, well, it, 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 you know, wide receivers that are constantly missed by the quarterback I feel like that has to be sometimes on the wide receiver because over doing this long enough, it just seems like now, are you talking there getting open and they're, they're getting missed as in the target yes, is missing the, them? the target is missing them. Because that's what I saw a lot with Henry Ruggs. He looked good. He was getting open. The opportunity is going to be there. They did not add wide receivers. I mean, they got John Brown. That's it. They didn't draft any wide receivers of note. And they want their early first round pick last year to take that step forward. So I, I think he is a late round dart throw that I'm fine taking a shot on. The opportunity is there. The talent was there. If he actually gets better then why, why couldn't he end up being an important fantasy option this year? What's so wild about it is, uh, I mean, according to PFF, Derek Carr has the second highest grade on deep passes. That's what I'm talking about. Is like it's Derek Carr is not a bad quarterback, but for some reason, when those two are connected, it's like they're just out of sync a little bit. That's that's how I, I viewed it. All right. Uh, I mean, and... and you're right that there that's a big target share that could be moved around. It was I mean you bizarre that you had um and you also had Hunter Renfro pulling in like 15% of the targets last year. I mean at both Henry Ruggs and Brian Edwards were really not factors in the offense at all. And, and but here's the really nice thing about it is because of that the combination of it being Derek Carr which people don't like and a complete bust of a rookie season Ruggs is not going to be drafted early. Nobody wants right. to be the guy drafting Ruggs this year and being, oh, yeah, how'd he do last year? So if you can, I mean, what better pick for a late round double digit wide receiver than someone with that level of upside versus some, uh, you know, older veteran who's going to probably sit on your bench and never do anything? All right. Our next question is from. Uh, off of Instagram, Stanton Carter, which running back backfield is the hardest to predict this year Ooh. besides Buffalo? Well, that one's easy. It's uh, 6A and 6B. 
Uh, as, oh, we're down to six? Well, like I put them into the NFL. It wasn't JV anymore. So in the All NFL, right. they were like 6A and 6B. Um, difficult backfields to project. Um, I will say everything is hard to project on the Patriots. Uh, no, I, Do I'm, you just have it being Harris? Is, I mean, I'm into Damian, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm in on that. Uh, but the, the Jets is difficult to decipher right now uh, because they brought in Tevin Coleman. They drafted Michael Carter, but they didn't draft him until the fourth round. LaMichael P. Ryan is theoretically – or wait, not theor technically the veteran running back on the team, so theoretically would have the first crack at being the starter, but you have no clue how, the, how it's going to break up. The San Francisco system essentially is coming uh, over with Mike LaFleur. Is that just going to break it up into a three running back crew? I mean, yeah, it's it very difficult to figure out what's going on there. I think it'll be a hodgepodge. The one that comes to mind for me, and it's because of like what I think is going to happen versus what I desire to happen, is the Denver Broncos. Because you've got Melvin Gordon Dude, there. Dude, they're so low in my rankings, and, and I hate it. Yeah, and it's like, I hate it. I mean, obviously, he's paid a lot of money. He's their three-down guy, but then they traded up to get Javante Williams, and they signed Boone, who they just came out talking about how, like, oh, yes. he's going to be involved, too. So this is probably going to be an uglier season for all three of those guys than we want it to be, barring injury. Um, you know, Melvin Gordon's not going to get enough work to be as good as he was last year, and he wasn't great last year. Javante's not going to get enough work to be really relevant until maybe the end of the season if something uh, happens, and then Boone is irrelevant. He's just there to take carries from others. This one's from Nick Larson off of Instagram. Who is a running back in the later rounds that you are confident with? Confident with in the later rounds? Is that possible? <laughs> um, confidence. It, it definitely is possible. Running backs that you are confident in are usually in the earlier rounds. Um uh, how late are we talking? Like David Johnson to me is someone that I think will continue to drop. Nobody wants a Texan. Uh, the 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 room got murky with Mark Ingram there, but I am confident that it is his role. I'm I'm confident that he will have the majority of the the work there. And that's again like I, I don't really want David Johnson on my team because I don't think the offense is going to be that good. But he could end up, you know, being close to a leader in receiving for that team someone who i am quite confident i don't know where he's going because i don't have his adp in front of me but it is uh it, it is another quadzilla it is aj Dillon in green bay because aaron jones is the guy but number one aaron jones has not been able to stay healthy uh number two jamal williams was a factor in the offense when it, it was aaron jones and jamal there was there was a, a little bit of work there that AJ Dillon could just walk right into, and then the other thing, Jay, when I'm, I'm going through all these stats, you know, and you're, you're, you're starting off of a, a presuming health, a great, not a great, that's the wrong word, but a just a productive season, trying to figure out if this guy hits 17 games, what does that look like? But the problem I've been running into is the thought of, are we really going to see anybody? At, especially at the running back position, even someone like Christian McCaffrey, if he can stay healthy for 17 games, is the team really going to give that workload to one person? When you have you have a whole extra game, you don't have another bye week. Are we going to? Is this going to be a really frustrating thing where just randomly you'll see starters? get pulled essentially that like oh well this game is uh going well I th we think we can kind of rest our our starter a little bit more than normal do you have you encountered any of that thought process this year I haven't I okay. I don't think that the extra game is going to change a coach's uh philosophy of how they want to play football I don't think Tomlin who wants that three down back is going to think well, there's one extra game this year. I'm going to change how I do it. Uh, and, and on the flip side, there's there's coaches that already have a complete committee, and that, that shouldn't make a difference. So I haven't found it making any adjustments in the way that I'm statting people out. It is the one thought I do have, though. And while you were talking, I was like, man, you say if they make it to 17 games, 
ain't nobody making it seven. Like right. at running back, yeah. it's it's just crazy. Last year, two running backs in the top twenty made it sixteen games. That's it. It was I think Naeem Hines and uh, <laughs> and Derrick Henry. Um, so yeah, it doesn't happen. Uh, one more name Wait, to throw did Henry, out. I thought Henry missed the game. Um, you might be right, but I usually am. So you can vet that. Um, How dare you? Now I have to look it up. <laughs> uh, and here's another name while you look that up. Uh, no, I don't know. He didn't. He missed the game two oh, years ago though. Dang it! Wait, no, two years. I was thinking of two years. He, ago. So he did play sixteen. Yes. Okay. I you was got it. You were. Yes, correct. the computer. Yeah. Um, Mike Davis, I still think he'll be um, not not a late round guy, but certainly within running backs, nobody's going to be drafting him over, you know, good productive running. Back. I think Mike Davis has a great season. Uh, obviously, TBD, it could change after. I, I mean, I see a world where Julio is gone post, uh, you know, June first, right. and then when cap room opens up, they go and try to make an offer on some player um, to add to that backfield. But as of right now, Mike Davis looks like he's going to have a great season. Going to throw to another voicemail, a very interesting topic, Michael Thomas. What's up, guys? My name's Cody. I'm calling from Florida, big fan of the show. My question for you is for a dynasty, uh, what do you think you value Michael Thomas at right now? What do you think you could possibly get for him in terms of draft picks or players? Uh, let me know. Big fan. Michael Thomas. 28-year-old Michael Thomas. 28-year-old Michael Thomas, who might have a starting quarterback, uh, we do not know. How are you valuing, valuing Michael Thomas? So I think Michael Thomas is going to be excellent in fantasy this year. I think he's going to be As great with, with either wide receiver. Uh, I think he's got at least three more seasons of um, very, very high-level production. He's going to be what he was almost the majority of, the entirety, I should say, of his career. He had the one outlier season where he was the wide receiver one, was unfathomable, broke NFL records. But usually, since he's come into the league, he's like wide receiver six, seven, eight, nine. You know, he's a wide receiver one. He's just not the dominant, most dominant guy. I think you're going to get that for the next three years. So I value him quite highly. I doubt right now that you can get enough for him in a dynasty league. I agree. If you can, like if you can, if you, you know, every, every league is different. It's just a matter of the individuals in your league and will they uh, value that player. I'm willing to shop Michael Thomas. And if I can get multiple firsts and a young prospect, I'd be willing to to look at that depending on, you know, my team. I just don't think you're going to get a big haul, in which case I'd just hold him and have him dominate, you know, on Sundays. Two firsts and Devontae Smith. Oh, I would take that deal. You would take I, I would take two first and Devontae Smith. One first Thomas. and Devontae Smith. I'm going to ask for another first, please. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's. Uh, and for, if you have forgotten, Michael Thomas, we didn't forget he was hurt, but when he came back in that stretch of six games, he was averaging over six receptions, over 70 receiving yards. And, like, I mean, with, with, you're talking Taysom Hill is in there for a good amount, and that was not even full Michael Thomas. He forced himself back on the field to try and help Drew Brees in what they knew was his final year, and then uh, that he couldn't finish. He had to miss three games so they rest up for the playoffs. Uh, so, oh man, come uh, on, Winston! Come on, Winston! You're, Win that you, job. So what? A gut check right now. Taysom is Taysom. Uh, I've, I've got Taysom winning the job, but because they've they've still got a good defense and they can win more games with Taysom than they can with Jameis Winston, assuming that Winston has not changed his ways uh, when it comes to turning the ball over. I statted Jameis. Good. I'm, I'm glad you did because I believe Andy is going Taysom. I'm going Taysom. Someone needs to go Jameis so that we can actually see if – I mean, because it, it makes a big difference, right? Like the passing volume will be much higher with Jameis Winston. Yeah. You've got to keep throwing after those turnovers. You know what I mean? From Instagram, Fantasy Front Office, what is your go-to game day snack? Oh, man. And just a reminder, Jason, we we have a time threshold here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> hell yeah. All right, well, I, the shows can last a whole lot longer than this, so let's go. One go-to snack is, is pizza a snack? Um, it, it depends, on, it depends you know, on how you look at it. Honestly, I think that's a big problem for me. I think I view pizza as a snack. Like, oh, I'm not really like you. <laughs> it's not lunchtime, but there's some cold pizza in the fridge. I'll just snack on that. What other 
entrees do you view as a snack? Ooh, sliders um, are a snack. Okay. What uh, define? How big does a slider have to get before it makes the jump? It's just a small bun. From from a, wait, small bun. Small bun. So it, if you had a, like a tiny patty with a big bun, that's a burger. That's a crappy <laughs> burger. But if you've got a full size bun, that's a burger. If you've it's got a the smaller size of the bun, one hundred percent. Because I, I was, had no idea. Yeah, I mean, do 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 do. Um, the more you know. And what if you got a what if you got a a, a third pounder, and you got a tiny little bun? <sighs> That's a big slider. It's like man. A, it's a, that's it's, a good slider. It's like a man in a funny top hat. Oh man, that that to me is a great snack. Um, and then would you would you eat the meat edge off? You have to eat the meat edge <laughs> off first, because you don't want it. Sliding. I don't know. I'm just asking the questions. Absolutely, you eat the meat ring, and then you've got just a normal <laughs> slider. Um, I'm starving. I would also throw out sweet tart ropes. As, oh yes. I mean, we talked about favorite. them on the spitballers, but it's not a joke. We eat them no, around it, the the studio. We we can't keep these things. There's probably in stock. a bag a day that's going down right now. Yeah, and whew, it's a problem. We, <laughs> not a sponsor should be a sponsor. Come on, uh, YouTube Ben uh, Ben Sharp says, "Whose dynasty outlook do you like more, Rondale Moore from the Arizona Cardinals or Elijah Moore who landed on the New York Jets?" That's an easy Elijah Moore for me because I think that Elijah Moore is going to become the one. And I don't think that for Rondell What? Moore. Yeah. I think that... Do you think Elijah Moore will become the number one on his team yes. that has Corey Davis and Denzel Mims? Denzel Mims has done nothing, proven nothing. They drafted a very high wide he's, receiver. He's proven that he can play in the NFL. Absolutely. But he is, they just drafted a high level, uh, high draft capital wide receiver to be a replacement coming in rookie year with Five, their nine, new, 185 with well when i say big i'm you know i'm not talking size um i'm saying like the the draft capital is is a big investment but uh i mean okay put it this way you just said denzel mims right that's that's the competition here and Corey davis and Corey davis perennial wide receiver two for a team or deandre hopkins like Rondale Moore is not going to become the number one. Maybe three years that. from now, four years from now. I think Elijah Moore could, by the end of this year, develop as – you know, we see this too with when, when a rookie quarterback comes in with a rookie wide receiver. I always think back to the Andy Dalton, A.J. Green. Um, you know, there's just – they develop that connection. They, they're in – they're in it together as the rooks, and they get a head start together. So I, I, I would prefer Elijah Moore over Rondale. So I'm trying to – track down the exact draft okay so denzel mims round two pick 34 oh or i'm sorry denzel mims was round two pick 59 elijah moore was round two pick 34 oh eat it <laughs> so i was gonna point out i mean the draft price between the two of them is not that different uh i i lean man i think i take rondale in that situation really yeah hmm you have more trust in uh, Cliff Kingsbury like, than I do. I trust that somebody else might be in charge sooner than later. Oh, that's a good point. We've got yeah, a what tough if that schedule happens? this year. I mean, look, long, long, long term, um, Kyler is the much better quarterback, so I understand that. Um, and uh, Hopkins is older, so there, there's an argument to be made for the Rondale side. Um, I, I guess I'm looking at it more of. I think that Elijah Moore will get off to a much quicker start to his career. This is off of Twitter from Chase, who says, I know it is no longer Dynasty Week, but I'm curious. How do you measure the value of a year in draft picks, as in... Oh, he, we could have just gone with this. It's a very specific question. Oh, just, okay, let's go. <laughs> it was a high-level philosophical question about draft picks, but also, uh, what is the difference between a, a 2022 second and a 2023 20, second. A lot. So future, So that, that's what we're talking about, the philosophy of how far out a draft pick is. How much do you value that pick? Uh, much, much less. I mean... You ever heard of credit cards? <laughs> <laughs> you never have to pay them back. <laughs> um, Free money. Yeah, I mean, when you when you get an entire year out of, uh, of an asset, right? No matter what, whether it's a draft pick, a player, uh, uh, 2022, 2024, we're just talking about an asset that you have for your roster. And you're adding 
17 games to that asset for your team. Like, um, th those things matter. Sometimes people are so caught up with the capital that they have on paper that never ends up scoring points for your roster to beat the other team you're going up against. Um, I value having the here and now more than the, the long term. And, and that's not to say that there isn't value in the long term by any means. It's just to say that, you know, a, a, a 2021 second and a 2022 second are drastically different values from one another. And I will comment on it that more often than not, we see these rookies gain value mm -hmm. in average in average startup draft uh, price, even if they don't exactly even if do they great. even if they do nothing. It generally takes something catastrophic for these a, a high NFL draft capital rookie to drop in their startup price. It, Jerry Judy sucked. His value is still very high. very stable. Yeah. If, if it, it, it's probably going up now. Of like, there's a lot of Twitter hype uh, building. The possible Aaron Rodgers going to his team. Like, there's just it's just theory and rumors right now. But that's that's where the market comes from. Yeah, no, it's 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 a good point. So not only do you have the potential to land a star in that first year, but then even afterwards, oftentimes you have more value that following year from the previous pick from Instagram top Scott Julio's future for dynasty keep or trade trade if you can yeah I just think now is a really tough time to trade him and that being said uh, what is your gut on the all the rumors of whether Julio could get traded this year uh, I th I think it's gonna happen so I, I, and it's after I'm with it's it has to be after June first to maximize the contract situation. And if you're a a another team and the Falcons are like, we'll trade it to you, you just got to wait a couple of weeks. I think the deal is going to hold. They're not going to. Well, no, absolutely not. We must have Julio Jones immediately. Right. So you know, I will say this: I think he's going to have more value now than he will in two months if he's traded. But again, I brought this up during Dynasty Week. Um, the time to trade Julio, because he's going to be great this year. Like I, I don't think any of us are like, oh, he's over the hill. He looked crappy last year. He was awesome. Um, Very hurt, though. So, so sure, and you, this is a slight gamble. But if you wait towards the trade deadline and there are teams out there that are trying to make their push to make the playoffs or to put their, their own team over the top and win a championship this year, they will sell out. They will sell their future. They'll trade you a high-level rookie that hasn't broken out this year and a one to just go get Julio to win it all this year. And so you might want to hold them till then. It's, so it's either trade them now or hold them till the deadline. This one's off of Twitter from at Goodbye Irish. It says, who is this year's late-round tight end? Who is this year's? Late round tight end, and I believe Are you, I, I believe they simply mean who is uh, the late round tight end favored by the other guys on the fantasy footballers. Uh, well, aren't we going fishing? Oh, I, like I didn't know if you were fully in on that. Um, yeah, so I I do like I do like Adam Troutman. Actually, you want to know who? You, I mean, I know my answer for sure. The late, it's not Troutman. I love him as a sleeper. Um, I love him in dynasty, and and I'm excited to see what happens. Uh, more often than not, those players don't pan out, but when they do, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. The late round tight end for this year that I am all about, that's someone I've been all about in the past, was mocked for it, and then he had a great season. He's a little older, but I'm telling you right now, Jared Cook yeah, is going to freaking okay. dominate this I'm year with, with Justin Herbert. He, he's, he is set up. I mean, there were, what, like 93 targets that Hunter Henry left, and he didn't even play a full season. Herbert's great. If he counts uh, he's sitting uh, i like i said now stats subject subject to change still multiple teams left like george kittle so george kittle will pass him but if let's say george kittle passes jared cook on my rankings and no one else then he's sitting here at my tight end nine yeah like i'm in i mean and then one spot or a couple spots behind him is blake jarwin of course oh, of course <laughs> yeah this is jarwin what, season. It's always what jarwin could have been for Blake Jarwin. Well, I mean, look, if it could have been, then it should still be. 
I know. It's just much harder now because CeeDee Lamb really broke out. Fair. But Michael Gallup was doing nothing. So maybe, maybe. And we'll get out of here this on a fun one from Instagram, Acoustic Roots. If you could pick anywhere to hold a destination draft, mm. where would you do it? So I think it would be different in most years. Um, I might go more extravagant more rare, more unique. But as of right now, because it's kind of been a, you know, it's been a year and a half of not doing a lot of fun things. I'm going to Vegas. I'm just going, st <laughs> I'm going straight to Vegas. We're going to cut it up. We're going to sit at some tables. We're going to have a blast, oh. have a great draft. That's my, that's my 2021, uh, destination draft. Now, choice. if I can pick anywhere and they're just, they're going to figure out a way to get me there. I'm going on the International Space Station, baby. Oh, <laughs> there, that's that's upgrading it a bit. Imagine doing a fantasy draft from from space. Ooh. I mean, you're you're done after that. Yeah, like it's the coolest draft of all time. And where do what do you what do you do as a follow up? What do you? I don't. Yeah, I, you go to Vegas. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, we would like to thank Pristine Auction for sponsoring today's show, the best sports memorabilia site of all time. Uh. There's, there's a couple things up for a great price right now, like a Baker Mayfield signed official NFL game ball starting at just $40. A CeeDee Lamb signed official game ball at $20. Uh, I'm going mano y mano with someone over a Carson Palmer signed Arizona Cardinals jersey right now. Ooh, very nice. Good luck. And I need them to lay down and let if me. If you're out there, yeah, man, stop it. Lay down. Stop it. I'm trying to get a Carson Palmer jersey. But when you go to sign up at Pristine Auction, make sure you use the code Ballers. That will yes. uh, connect you know you to to us and give you a ten dollar credit. Yes, yeah, ten dollar credit. Why would you not do that? It's yeah. completely free. You only pay for the stuff that you win. That's gonna do it for today's show. Makalaka ding dong, Jason. It's coming up on Thursday. Thank you for supporting the show. We will see you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.